What's going on, Pokemon trainers? I'm Trainer Connor, and you are watching another Wi-Fi Battle video in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Thank you guys for coming to this video. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happen to be upon this video. It means a lot to my channel. In just a couple of hours, we'll be playing the latest DLC, The Crown Thunder. So, to wrap things up, as far as, because well, right now we are in the Isle of Armor stage, I have a great battle. I have an awesome match against my longtime rival since the very beginning, Necro Siva. And he used to upload a lot of videos back in the day. He still has a YouTube channel, I'll link that in the description. I know he's active on Twitter as well, so I'll link that as well. And, you know, I love his content, I love his battle style. We have great battles, an OU match, no Gaia match. I'll take the time to go over the team a little bit here. Of course, if you don't want to hear me out, I will put a timestamp in the description. So, there you go. Now, I'm going to start on my side from the bottom to the top. I have a defensive Resto Chesto Rotom Heat. And then we have a Life Orb Nasty Plot Hydreigon Dragon Slayer. I love this one because I bred it with a Dusk Ball, it's very fitting. We have a defensive The Loir Weezing Dinage, a Rival Boom nicknamed after the comic store King Kong, is one very sword stance variant, and we have Aquagon named after one of my friends on Discord, Aquagon the Intellion, holding the Life Orb as well. So we have two Life Orbers on the scene. And then the last Pokemon is Soft Sand. Stealth Rocker Duster, named after a hot rod that I saw in my local area not that long ago. I was like, hey, I should nick in this sucker Duster. So there you go. On my opponent's side, he has a lot of Pokemon that are just interesting to see, like Lunatone, for example. You don't really see Lunatone in a match like this one. But he has a Lunatone, Surfetch, Dragonzolt, Sandslash, a Lowland form. The Lissapod, another Pokemon that's interesting to see out there. And Roman Nine Tails. So it looks like a hail team in some ways. Sometimes it's not, depending on how you see it. But I think it's a hail team. I love it. So with that said, let's go right into the bench. Okay, so like I did in the last video, I edited out the parts that are considered live. So you'll see that this battle is as if you're watching this from the Versus Recorder. And I hope that it's not too jarring. Now, we begin the match. Me versus Necrosiva. Let's go. So I start off with Rotom Heat. Go for the Willow Wisp on turn one. I hit the Galistapod. And I'm a brave soldier for doing that because he goes for the liquidation. Had I not burned it, I would have lost Rotom Heat from the start. And you'll see that I utilize Rotom Heat to its full potential in this fight. Now, unfortunately, I went for the full switch and I don't switch out. He does. So he winds up going to Nine Tails. And I was like, okay, what's he gonna do here? Is he gonna switch out again or is he gonna go for the Aurora Veal? And this is a little unfortunate because this allows his Pokemon to utilize his special and physical moves. I go for Overheat and I don't knock him out because one of Nine Tails is more especially bulky. And I knew he was going to switch out in the winter tone, so I took the chance to go for Volt Switch. It's not going to do anything because of my special attack being lowered, and I go into Aquagon the Inteleon. I could have gone into High Dragon here, but I thought going to Inteleon would be better. I go for Scald and I'm hoping for a burn for more residual damage, but that's not the case. And he reveals. Necrosebo does. He reveals the Meteor Beam plus the Power Herb combination. And after seeing this in action, I knew I had to bring one of those. So you'll expect to see a Meteor Beam little ton in the foreseeable future. That is just a really fun set, and I can't wait to use it. So we lose Inteleon, but that's okay, because I go into my Nasty Plot Hydreigon here. I don't end up using Nasty Plot in this fight. I am able to use Dark Pulse, smack him real hard with it, and we knock out Rutan. 
I switch out, go into my real time heat once again, and he goes to the first impression with his surf fetch, and that is a critical hit. You're gonna see a lot of critical hits with his surf fetch. Just till you wait. There's gonna be a lot. Knowing that I'm running low on HP, I go for my rest. Like I mentioned in my analysis, this is a Resto Chesto set. And I got this from, this is actually the same Rotom from X and Y or us. Yeah, so I didn't really have the chance to rebreed it for something different. I have like two different Rotom available right now. So I go for another overheat. So you're seeing a lot of Rotom action here. And unfortunately, you don't knock out the list upon, but that's okay. He only gets up a layer of spice, which actually ends up not mattering because I'm going to defog those later. I go for the Volt Switch, knowing that that will knock him out from that range. And I just go into my Dinaj, my uh, Galar Weezing, and that nickname is inspired from the man that first wore the top hat. So I hope that it's a nice fact that got that nickname. He goes back into Nine Tails and goes to the Galar Reveal once again. I go for Toxic, knowing that having some residual damage on Ninetales would be beneficial because Ninetales is bulky, like I mentioned. When you see someone's going online, they're not really important. There's a cool shout out to whoever's watching this video. And you're uh, you know, watching that and you're like, oh, that's me there. Anyways, so though, I go for D5, like I mentioned. Blizzard, oh man, that is 100% accurate in the hail. And you see that I take that really well because Gar using is really especially apparent. Now, he goes for the Aurora Veal. It turns out the Aurora Veal effects are gone when I use the Defog. If I just went for the Defog again, that would have been better instead of going for the Strange Steam. But I was like really adamant in knocking out the Ninetales. Why did I do that? I don't know. Because I thought, you know, the Poison could just knock him out. That's okay. That's one of the few mistakes that I made this battle. Here, he goes into his Alolan Sand Slash, goes for the Sword Stance. I was like, nope, not on my watch, you're going to get burned. I was worried that he had the one berry on this set. Thankfully, he doesn't. But that's okay. Now I burned it, that's great, he's at neutral attack. I switch out and go into Escadrill the Duster. And because I have Earthquake and Iron Head, I figured I could knock him out with it. But that's not going to happen. I tried though, and that means I, you know, he's going to knock me out next turn. That means I will not get my stealth drops. I had them. That would have been nice against the low and nine tails and the sand slash if I got them up earlier. But that's not the case. So we lose extra drill. But he did okay in this fight. And best part of it all is he's burned and he's almost out. So I can go back into Rotom Heat again. He goes for Iron Head and I was like, okay, he's going to do that and he's going to probably flinch me, right? No, Rotom Heat doesn't care. He just goes for the Volt Switch again. So we're getting a lot of momentum with Rotom Heat this battle. MVP, MVP, that's right. So I go into my Galar Weezing and I just get my Black Sludge Recovery. And here comes a Pokemon I haven't faced before. Dracozolt. I know he has the Bolt Beak move, and I was like, okay, I didn't want anyone else to take it, so I just end up going. I'm gonna let him sacrifice that Pokemon there. I can go to King Kong here, the Rylodim. Unfortunately, he has the Aerial Ace. I end up surviving though, and that means I can get off a free Sword Stance on the off chance that I can use my priority move, Grassy, grassy Glide there, excuse me. Yeah, Grassy Glide, and that's going to do a lot of damage for it being resistant and all. So even though King Kong goes down right here, I put a lot of damage to the Dracozolt. This way I can go into Dragon Slayer once again and just nail him real hard. The super effective Dragon Pulse here. I don't know if it mattered though if I lifted that residual damage with King Kong. But either way, I want to make sure that he has some damage. So, here's where things get interesting here, alright? I go for Dragon Pulse, and I 
don't take him out. He goes to close combat. What I should have done was sacrifice my Hydra, or no, my Hydra gun. I should have sacrificed the Rotom Heat. And that, if he was going to go for close combat, he would have had all those defenses lowered. And then go into the Hydra gun. And then I would have knocked him out. This is where the match is over. And that critical hit mattered. After doing the calculations, thanks to Necro Sivo, I had a chance of surviving. So even though I lose this battle with a 1-0 victory for my opponent, I had a lot of fun with that match. Had I switched out from High Dragon to, to my Rotom Heat initially, then he goes to close combat, that's the defense sword, go back into High Dragon, I was knocked out the Sir Fetch. That's what I should have done. But instead, I just let High Dragon go down, and then a critical hit from the other close combat, knocking out the Rotom Heat, that mattered tremendously. So thank you, Necrosiva. We're going to have another match in the foreseeable future. I know it. And if you guys enjoyed this match, be sure to give me a like and a subscription on the bottom right corner to my Pokeball there. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Enjoy the Crown Tundra. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, my friends.